Oh boy! Compression testers. There's been a lot of videos out there lately about this. Nope, my name's not Steve. I'm the lawnmower lady and I like fixing small engines. A lot of the issue out there is not necessarily with, you know, how we use compression testing, but it's the type of compression tester. We're talking about automotive compression testers versus small engine. And all it really boils down to, and all of us are in agreement about this, is it has to have a Schrader valve in the end that goes right into the spark plug hole. If your compression tester doesn't have this Schrader valve in the end, you're gonna get wildly inaccurate compression readings because you're now including the volume of this hose, which you think might not be a whole lot, but it can have a great impact on smaller size cylinders. This is great if you have one, but what if you're forced to use an adapter if you have a 10 millimeter spark plug, mm, it doesn't seem like a lot, but I'm gonna show you the math. So up until this point in time, and again, I've not really had a good way to test compression with this guy, because using these adapters is gonna be pretty inaccurate. So uh, let's see how inaccurate this is gonna be. So we're gonna see what the compression is on this with the uh, oversized adapter, and we'll compare it to the two with the one I'm gonna modify. Four pulls and I'm up to uh, about 75 PSI. Let's see how far this will go. So after another four or five pulls, I'm really only up to about 80 PSI and Anyone would say, oh, that engine is ruined. It's no good. That's the problem because this has the Schrader valve right at the end. I've added the entire volume of this adapter. Now, obviously, I use this as the worst example. So much reduced compression because we've increased the cylinder capacity by that much, which you might not think is a whole lot, but let's do the math on that. If you look inside of here, you're gonna see that basically this threaded part is one section. It has one certain diameter and length. And then the other part where you're gonna screw your compression tester into is a different diameter and width. So I sent an early edit to a YouTube friend of mine showing how I did all the complicated math and geometry and calculations to determine what the volume of this is. And he said that part of the video was kind of long and boring and suggested I try to land the plane. So here's the 30 second Reader's Digest version. This is a, just a syringe, a five milliliter syringe. I'm gonna hold my finger on the bottom right here and we're gonna see how much this adapter holds. All right, right to the tippy top. It's just over four milliliters or four cc's. Goodness, this was adding almost 20% volume to the combustion chamber. Kind of shocking, huh? If you're using an automotive compression tester, let's say you've got a 1.8 liter four cylinder, that's 1800 cc's divided by four. That means each one of those is 450 cc's. Well, if I'm only adding plus four cc's, whoa, that's like a drop in the bucket. And I'm doing this with a calculator, so I'm not fooling anybody here. That is 0 0.008888.8 of 1%. That is really nothing in comparison. This is an Actron, okay? This came with a different, this is a pretty good one. I use this for years and years. The Mighty Vac, however, has different hoses and each one of those hoses, 12 millimeter, 18, 14 millimeter, very common in lawnmowers, those have the Schrader valves, but they don't have the Schrader valve in the end of the 10 millimeter, which is why this is so important, especially because you do run into 10 millimeter threads on chainsaws, weed whackers, blowers, that sort of thing. So I went searching for some videos on how to solve this problem, which was, hey, 
I wanted to put a Schrader valve in the end of one of my adapters. And you know, I'm not a machinist. I got a drill and a vise. I don't even have a drill press. So you're gonna watch me either succeed or fail in trying to get a Schrader valve to fit in one of these guys right here. The key to all this is getting the right Schrader valve. Now, the one I'm gonna be using is a spare that came in my Mighty Vac kit. And I don't know if you can see this or not, but it's got white seal on the edge. And you can actually feel how little pressure it takes to open that thing up with your hands. This is the Harbor Freight one in my hand right here with the blue seal. The color of the seal really doesn't matter, but you'll know when you press down on these, the one that came out of a, a scooter tire or a bicycle, and then these three that came out of my compression testers. Let's put this little piece there, tear out our scale. In order to get this guy to stay about halfway down, we're looking at maybe 12 grams of pressure. The good old Harbor Freight one, that takes about 30 grams of pressure. One that came out of a scooter tire, over 400 grams of pressure to get that to stay halfway open. This is why it's so important to make sure you're using that low pressure. One is made by Milton, and I'll put you a link to if you want to try this and build these on your own. So I went through a lot of research on this and found that the standard tap size for this guy is a 5 V1-36. What? I had to find these on eBay. The 5V, actually the 5 is like an M5. They add a 36 to the end, which is like Imperial. I found some documentation that shows something in India I found. But what it boils down to is I watched a video of a guy, he's a machinist, and he was using drill bit size is a machinist size. He used a 23 and a 15 drill bit. I don't have those. And another YouTuber, you might have seen that video, he had to drill out the first hole at four millimeters and then the second hole at five millimeters because that Schrader valve has a little shoulder on it. It has to fit inside of that just so and seal that hole up. But he eventually found out that a 4.2 millimeter and a five millimeter drill bit was the perfect size. I got my good old fashioned DeWalt drill index. Of these three adapters that I have, there's really only one that's gonna work. Obviously the brass one, there's nothing for this tap to, to bite onto. And then the one that came out of the Mighty Vac, almost going in there. This one that came with the old Actron is gonna be the only one I can use. So the only way for me to really do this right is to make sure my drill is plumb and level. And of course, I can see this way on the drill, but trying to get it level. So I got this little bubble level thing here that has Velcro. And I've put Velcro on the other side. Give me a better idea of if I'm drilling plumb and level. First hole I'm drilling all the way through is 1164. That's going to allow the tip to go all the way through there. The next hole size is gonna be 3 16 which is what we're gonna use to tap the hole. So here goes nothing. I guess it's kind of nice that my hole is pre-drilled. This is brass. I hate these types of drills. There we go. All right, now I'm gonna want... Ugh. So now is the time for me to drill the hole depth for the threads to cut into, and I want that to be right at the edge of where the seal is. So now I'm gonna put a tape marker right on my drill bit 
at that 10 millimeter depth. This is real precision content here. This is just a girl in her shop with a vise and a hand drill. All right. So I just went down and drilled a little bit deeper. And uh, now my hole is 9.07 millimeters deep. And I went in at a little bit of an angle to try to make sure I've got that on the bottom. One more little time. Let's see if we can get a little more out of this. Because when I could look in it before, I could see a shoulder at the top, but not on the bottom. So I'm right at 10.45 millimeters at the top. Let me see if I can feel that shoulder on the bottom. Yes, I can feel the shoulder on the bottom now. So I think... I measured 10.27 in the bottom and 10.45 in the top. I think we're good to go. Now, on to the final frontier, 5V136 drill bit. It should bottom out, but because I can break things, I think I'd rather put a little bit of tape on my tap so I'll know not to go too far. A little bit of oil. Let's get tapping. Now, I'm not too concerned about the up and down, left and right, because the tap will center itself in here. All right, in out a little bit, in out. I think I'm doing pretty good. I'm not feeling too much resistance at this point. Here I'm feeling some pretty good resistance, about a millimeter before my mark. And I think I should stop right about there. All right, not too bad. It's brass. I mean, it's it's soft, so I wasn't expecting a lot of problems there. Now we're going to thread our little tap in until it's, I mean, our Schrader valve in until it seats. Woohoo, this is exciting. I don't know about you. Thunder and lightning, how appropriate. Perfect. I don't know if you can hear that thunder or not, but it's pretty funny. right at the perfect moment. Even if it's in there a little crooked, I think it's still going to do its job. It's flush. It's not sticking out right there. My drill bit didn't make that shoulder all the way in, or it cut a little bit of a lip, and it actually damaged the seal that's on here, okay? Because as I was screwing it in, I could feel it go in just a little bit, and then it would like turn a little bit. I think that's where it's getting over that bad part of the seal. So I'm going to take another one, I'm going to put some sealant on there. I'll screw that in. I'll screw it until I just feel it getting tight, like I don't want it to go crooked. Then I'll stop, let that sealant set for a couple hours, then I'll come test it. But how I'm testing this, here's the Mighty Vac adapter. So it's got the Schrader valve in the end right there, putting a little bit of about five pounds of pressure on here. That is holding pressure. Mine failed when I put that seal in there. So I'm going to try a new seal and put a little bit of sealant on there and hopefully that'll seal up. So I got a new seal out of the packet. I'm going to use a little bit of uh, ultra black gasket maker on here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover up. Why am I telling you what I'm going to do? I'll do it as I'm doing it. This is what YouTube is all about. So I got a little, little wooden tongue depressor thingy, very tiny. Cut that down and a little bit of goop of some ultra black brand new tube of that. I want to make sure I don't get it inside there, but just a little bit right around that seal because it will go in and work its way up to the threads. But I also want to get just a little bit where those threads are. Hey, listen to that rain. A little bit more sealant, just a little bit on these threads. I want to make sure that I am not messing up any of the action of that little piston right there. Ooh, I don't know if you can hear those raindrops or not, but it is coming down hard. Here goes nothing. All right, I hope none of that's gonna bubble over the edge here on me. I can actually stop right here and clean off the excess that's coming out here. And I'm going to stop screwing this thing in 
until I feel it hit that lip and I'm just going to not push it any further. Okay, there's just the smallest amount of resistance and I think if I push any further I'm going to feel it go a little crooked sideways. Wipe off this excess. I'm just going to have to be patient. Okay guys and gals, I've given this sealant time to sit. The rain has stopped, the sun is shining again, so let's screw this little guy on here and give this a whirl. Now, I know this starts and runs, despite there not being a tank on here. I've recently replaced the ignition coil and there is a problem with the fuel tank, so that's why that's off. So this does actually start and run, despite the appearances otherwise. All right, guys and gals, 150 with the correct adapter. Now, ideally, it would have been great for me not to have to use the sealant. I still might go back in and uh, re recut that seat because, you know, that valve has to sit exactly inside that seat because I didn't cut that seat well. I have a different drill bit I could use. And hell, maybe one of these days I might buy a drill press. Who knows? Hey, you win some, you lose some, what can I say? I enjoy doing stuff like this, even though I don't have the right tools. I think if I had a drill press, and you could probably do it a lot easier with a drill press, to get that drill bit exactly where it needs to be to create that step for that seal to rest on. Uh, and if not, then you can just, you know, goo some sealing around there like I did. Whatever works. And if it never works at all for you, at least you have the calculations of how to determine the percentage amount based on the measurements of your adapter. Now, if you enjoy videos like this where I make things, I modify things, some cool tools, I got a playlist right here. You'll like that. Mo happy.